Houston, former NASA astronauts, Dr. May Jensen and Captain Scott Kelly. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> in an effort to better prepare us for future trips to Mars and beyond. Bad stuff happens to our physiology while we're in space. We lose bone and muscle, our immune systems are degraded, there are vision effects, even changes to our, our DNA. In fact, 7% of my gene expression changed during my year-long mission, and as far as I'm told, hasn't changed back. Not exactly sure what that means, but I hope it's a good thing. NASA researchers benefited from conducting tests on both me and my identical twin brother, Mark, also a former NASA astronaut who remained right here on Earth. And the results were reassuring. While in space, the human body adapted to the extreme environment of space. But make no mistake, there is still much more to learn. As God for me, that's what's so exciting about space exploration. It's learning and purposefully expanding beyond what we know how to do. Similar out-of-the-box thinking that 50 years ago made the Apollo 11 mission a success, it's now being applied to map the boundaries of human interstellar flight within the next 100 years. And once again, all along the way, these scientific discoveries and technological advances will enhance life on Earth. As the principle of 100 year Starship initiative, our main objective is to be sure that the yet undiscovered capabilities for human interstellar flight that is going beyond our solar system to another star, that those capabilities exist within the next 100 years. The truth is, we believe pursuing an extraordinary tomorrow creates a better world today. When many of those that push these boundaries of possibility to occur to her, they piloted a much different craft. The iconic Chevrolet Corvette. Corvette have long been linked. Pilots like high performance, precise, and safe modes of transportation. And of course, it's got to be fast. And like a rocket, the Corvette you're about to see has the engine in the back. <laughs> Many people here and uh, watching around the world, I'm a huge fan, having owned two different generations of the Corvette myself. And tonight we're here to celebrate an important milestone in U.S. and automotive history. Here to tell you more is someone who knows a thing or two about Corvettes. Please welcome GM Executive Vice President and President of the Americas, Barry Engel. Many of the Mercury and Apollo astronauts took Rathman 
up on his Corvette off the road. Two lane blacktop duels fought between Shepard and astronaut Virgil Gus Grissom in their big block powered Corvettes would truly become the stuff of legend. In his quest for a competitive edge, Grissom had his last Corvette, a 1967 convertible, specially geared and modified for accepting extra wide rear racing tires. When Apollo 12 astronauts Dick Gordon, Charles Conrad, and Alan Bean ordered new 1969 Corvettes, they asked that the identically equipped 427 Stingray Coupes be custom finished in a special black accented Riverside Gold color scheme that was designed by Dean himself. Corvette gained huge exposure when it famously appeared in the June 1971 issue of Life Magazine. Apollo 15 Lunar Mission crew members Jim Irwin, Al Warden, and Dave Scott had been photographed with their Corvettes in a training version of the first lunar rover vehicle, or moon buggy, which they would deliver to the moon. The Apollo 15 crew members, their Corvettes were each a different color, red, white, and blue. Dual racing stripes on each car completed the colors of the American flag. Almost everyone has a story of the first time they saw a Corvette. I remember like it was yesterday. I was a little kid, and the neighbor across the street had a son who would occasionally come to visit. And the son, he rolled in style. He drove an early C3. It must have been about a 68 or a 69. It was one like the Apollo Pioneers drove. My dad, he always liked cars, and the Corvette caught his attention. But I didn't need dad to tell me it was cool. Even as a young kid, I could tell that Stingray with rally wheels and a rumbling V8 was really something special. Corvette is truly an American icon. No other sports car nameplate has been roaming the streets or dominating the tracks as long as Corvette. After 66 years and seven generations, Chevrolet's Corvette has garnered a passionate global family. And many of them are here tonight or watching around the world. From all of us at Chevrolet, thank you for joining us for this milestone event. Now, I could literally spend the entire show listing the thousands of Corvettes achievements. But first, there isn't enough time. And second, I'm sure I've missed something that would cause a, a fantastic and passionate debate. It is this passion for Corvette that unites our fans and our customers. This same passion drives our designers, our engineers, our suppliers, and of course, the entire manufacturing team here in the U.S., specifically in Bowling Green, Kentucky, where we proudly build this great car. And that passion it started on day one. January 17, 1953, Chevrolet revealed the Corvette Dream Car at New York's Walmart Astoria Hotel as part of GM's traveling auto show known as Autorama. Motorola. Not even the founding fathers of Corvette, designer of Harley Earl, architect of the V8 engine and Cole, or the young Belgian born engineer Zora Marcus Dunton. None of them could have imagined the automotive legend of the world. With more than 1.7 million produced, the Corvette has long been the crown jewel of Chevrolet. It has always represented Chevrolet's best in design, performance, and technology, all at a great value. Like their kindred spirits who made aviation and space exploration possible, our designers and engineers have been similarly inspired by every generation of Corvette to push the technical limits of propulsion, materials, precision engineering, design, and aerodynamics. We have not only pushed the envelope on our production cars, 
but we have been working behind the scenes for decades to design and engineer mid-engine research vehicles that pushed even further, all in preparation for this moment. Earlier, Scott and Meg outlined the importance of creatively blending engineering and design to make great things happen, and the importance of focusing on every detail. The next generation Corvette is not just about imaginative breakthrough engineering or breathtaking design. It's about both. And it's about every detail reimagined. What you're about to see is a milestone achievement for GM, for Chevrolet, and for Corvette. This car is a powerful testament to the creativity, imagination, discipline, and perseverance of the men and women who had the courage to dream and journey to places where few, if any, have ever gone before. Ladies and gentlemen, the all-new 2020 mid-engine Corvette.
50 years. After all those years, here I am at the launch of another engineering marvel, and another one that blows my mind, makes my spine tingle, that makes me proud to be an American, and that makes me want to build things. Appropriately, for a vehicle that's been an American icon since 1953, the new generation represents one giant leap for poor guys. The 2020 Chevrolet Corvette is, true to the vision of creator Zora Arkus Dunhoff, a mid-engine supercar. The C8 is everything Zora dreamed of, the technology you never could have imagined. For me personally, seeing the Corvette and meeting Zora for the first time all trace back to growing up in this great business. On many weekend afternoons, my dad came to work in the GM Tech Center. Or specifically the Chevrolet Engineering Building, where the Corvette came to life. I spent many of those rides in the constant rear flat area of Corvette Coupes. On the way home, it would take me by the GM Research Building lobby to see the Firebirds and their original Silver State. I just love everything about it. And they used to have a slot meeting running down the road from the GM Tech Center, where they sell Chevrolet heads and parts and all kinds of stuff. On one of those weekend trips to work when I was about 10, I begged my dad to stop the spot meet so we could check it out, and he did. We go inside the huge warehouse-like building to look around, and there's Zora. I'd never seen him before, but you could tell right away that he was someone special. He was sitting there holding the court, signing all kinds of things for all kinds of people. And it was just so cool, such a great moment. It all contributed to the aura of Corvette for me and reinforced what I already knew I wanted in my life. That's why it's so special and so exciting for me to be up here on this stage with this car. This car, the all new 2020 Corvette, is one that changes everything. With every succeeding generation since 1953, Chevrolet has worked hard to make Corvette better and better. We've never stopped including, never stopped innovating, and never stopped making the car faster, better handling, more comfortable, more everything. You can make the case that once we got to C7, we had pushed the limits of what we could do in that configuration. It was as close to perfection as one engine rear drive Corvette was going to get. To take performance and driving dynamics to the next level for our customers, we had to move to mid-engine. And that's what Zora had always wanted, of course. In 1959, exactly 60 years ago, Zora and his team went to work on developing Chevrolet Engineering Research Vehicle Number 1, commonly known as CERV-1. CERV-1, which made its debut in 1960, was a demonstration of what happens when you push the boundaries of engineering and design to develop a mid-engine race car. What made CERV-1 so unique was how light and powerful it really was. The car only weighed 1,600 pounds and the body accounted for 80 pounds of that. The 283 cubic inch V8 power of the CERV-1 produced 350 horsepower and weighed only 350 pounds thanks to the then novel use of aluminum in the cylinder block and heads and several other critical parts like the water pump and the flywheel. Zora's team also used magnesium in a clutch housing and fuel injection manifold, and it also featured mechanical fuel injection. But my favorite aspect of CERV-1, and it's probably this too, if you've ever seen it, um, you can actually see flames coming out of the back of it and it is just on there. So CERV-1 was followed by what I think is most, the most beautiful of all the CERV vehicles, the CERV-2, in 1963. The CERV-2 was an amazing car, built to compete against the Ford GTs of them all. It had a monocoque chassis, 377 cubic and V8 producing 500 horsepower. Importantly, CERV-2 was, in fact, all-wheel drive. The transmission featured a unique configuration in which the rear wheels were driven by one torque converter and the front wheels through another in the front. So our patent of this configuration in 1968. CERV-2 also marked the beginning of the velocity stacks, like the McLaren's had, which were developed, in fact, by General Motors R&D, and that car is very, very special. 
and in 1990 to serve three native states. I was already working at the company, so I remember it being built around the time we were spending a lot of time at the GM proving ground working on sort of a holy grail of a true active uh, suspension system. CERV 3 did have that yaw control and had a stable through the active suspension, and it had active arrow and other advanced technology on it. Like its predecessor, it had an all wheel drive mid engine configuration. And it was powered by a turbocharged ZR1 5.7. V8, producing 650 horsepower. And it weighed only 3,400 pounds thanks to extensive use of carbon fiber, and the central structure was in fact a carbon fiber torque tube that weighed only 38 pounds. The ends of that beam were machined from titanium. And for this new, first ever, mid-engine 2020 Corvette steam. They show what Corvette has always been about for Chevrolet and GM, pushing the boundaries of innovation in terms of propulsion, material usage, and performance. Now, just as Corvette has been a halo for Chevrolet and a brand, these serve cars were a halo for GM R&D, pushing the company to greater innovation into new heights. They also serve to show that mid-engine has always been part of Corvette's destiny, and it's something we've been looking at for a very, very long time. All along, it has been absolutely paramount that we keep Corvette true to its roots of attainable performance. Mid-engine has historically posed a challenge to this mission. Not so anymore. The time has come today, and we feel that both Corvette traditionalists and potential new customers will embrace the change in layout, especially once they see it and drive it. They'll think it's flat out the best Corvette they've ever driven, and that will be because it's the best for that anybody's driven. There are many reasons for that, even beyond the mid-engine layout, like the way it feels, the way it sounds, the way it looks, and the incredible attention to every detail on the car. And that's what we're going to dive into now with Phil and then Taj. So please join me in welcoming the Executive Design Director of Global Chevrolet, Mr. Phil Zack. each one before it had a strong and powerful presence. But the new mid-engine eclipses anything we've ever done before. This is not merely a new chapter in the Corvette legacy, this is an all new one. But before I continue, I want to acknowledge the true design talent that really brought this mid-engine Corvette to life, as well as generations prior. John Farr, former Chevrolet Executive Director of Design. John, you in the audience? And also Tom Peters, former Corvette chief designer. Now both John and Tom have recently retired from GM, but they're here with us tonight to share this moment. Uh, their legacy forever live on with Chevrolet and into the future with this new stunning 2020 stinger. Uh, I hope you all agree with me. Sure. <laughs> now Chevrolet has always been a symphony of performance, design, and engineering. But on this car, every element has been elevated to the next level of craftsmanship. The Stingray's exterior is a powerful, old, futuristic design statement with exotic proportions, a wider stance, but still unmistakably important. You can see the continued influence of aircraft design, being a muscular, the shape, conveying a sense of motion, even while standing still. With the new kept forward driving position and current location, the proportions become the essence of a jet fighter delivery. As you would have expected, we maintain some of the essential corporate design keys, 
that are timeless and transition well into this new mid-engine configuration. For example, the bold front face with LED lights and aggressive dual element DRL signature proudly the stay for that. The strong fender peaks over the front wheel and the rear quarters give the Corvette the expected athletic muscular appearance. The sleek sculpture is low, taut, and narrow driven. And the horizontal crease on the body side is the main design element that gives the Corvette its sleek appearance and anchors the fender shapes and aggressive side of the tail. The purity of this feature is so significant that we hit the door handle releases underneath the side intake to keep them clean and uninterrupted look. Now as we move to the rear of the car, the dual diamond tail lines are uniquely Corvette with an enhanced three-dimensional execution. With the wide lamp location and the lower dual exhaustives, the rear stance exudes the performance attributes of a true exotic. Now the design challenges in this mid-engine Corvette were unique in that everything had to be changed. But at the same time, our mission was to make the finished product not just unmistakably Corvette, but an exotic supercar version of it. By repositioning the engine to the middle, the proportions shift, and the whole canopy is forward in profile, allowing the rear wheels to move farther back for a much more aggressive attitude. The mid-engine design allows for a more forward feel from the driving position and visibility. You're actually leading the way as you drive. Additionally, having the motor behind you communicates a supercar feel, which intensifies the overall driving experience. The new location of the engine is truly the focal point for the car's design. It's the heart of this new Corvette, and it's just like a dual in the showcase. A jewel in a showcase that is visible through the large half rear Now, every visual surface on this component uh, received unprecedented attention, including the meticulously designed engine and underhood compartment. Diving into the detail execution of the car, the design team found inspiration in high end motorcycles and race cars. We sought to optimize the appearance of every white, two, component routing faster than finish. We took a panel and spent countless hours developing the engine compartment, right down to all the mechanical factors. The intake manifold covers were completely redesigned and the Corvette engine was added for additional detail. Now the exterior statement is bold, fresh, and fully capable, reflecting what we've learned from past Corvettes and from racing. For the new scenery, we completely redesigned its crew and air support. We looked at drag, lift, how to achieve the optimal balance with this new mid-engine configuration while maintaining the design. All the surfaces are pulled taut as possible over the mechanicals, giving the car a dynamic energy that visually draws people to it. Now what you see on stage is the PKP1 package. We've had this unique track package for Stinger in the past, and this one offers customers even more. As you can see, it has an, an aggressive splitter and an open air rear sport. Our designers work hand in hand with the air engineers to give a whole new meaning to the term. Now, Tad will touch on this a little bit more in his presentation. Now, the mid engine configuration not only enables a study exterior, but also improves interior accommodations. With the engine behind the driver, the cowl and the instrument panel are below. The entire occupant package is moved forward 16 and a half inches, improving visibility. The driver compartment is also larger than the previous generation, offering more space and an inch more seat drive. With this new mid engine exotic exterior, we have to deliver an inspiring interior package. Wow. The so most important is the driver centric which features a new squared off two spoke steering wheel that leads them. The square steering wheel shape and low two spoke configuration enable a full nine to three hang grip position during the higher corner. The compressed shape also allows for better visibility and more legging. In the cockpit, the controls are literally wrapped around you in all directions. It reflects the car that is all about catering for the driver's experience. 
you'll notice that the only knob on the IO section is the body control. And that's because it's the most frequently used. Every other button has to in its place. The single line of time and control buttons on the console are intuitively laid out and minimized. The instrument panel's wings extend from the driver's console and wrap around the IP, framing the space. This same, less than more philosophy, has also been incorporated into the unique culture center here. The look is simple and clean and helps us keep the instrument panel low for great forward display. Now we will offer three seat options. A GT1, a GT2, and a competition for the drivers seeking the right balance of comfort and style. We now offer six interior color themes, more than number four, which also includes more personal choices for material selection and stitching. The interior theme is also larger and more pronounced. It highlights the handcrafted quality and attention to detail. Even the seat belts get expanded and expressive color palette, an option of six. <laughs> We've also expanded the exterior color palette to 12, more than we've ever offered previously. Now everything on the interior is authentic and most, paths are wrapped, most parts are wrapped in leather or suede. The buttons are aluminum. Carbon fiber is used throughout for lightweight performance and visual appeal. Now all of these details are what makes this 2020 mid-engine Stingray special. From the moment customers walk up to see the car, open the door, we want to surprise them and let them discover something they weren't expecting. We want them to say, this can only be a Corvette, but also say it feels like no Corvette. But none of this great design would be much without the performance, the packaging, and total ability of this mid-engine sports car. All made possible by our incredible engineering team, and a Corvette executive chief engineer, Dad Stripper. Thank you, Dad. some of the physics behind why putting the engine behind the driver enables us to make a quantum leap forward in driving dynamics. A mid-engine architecture allows for a very short, straight, stiff steering system. It's 50% stiffer than today's car, and that makes the driver's input to the chassis nearly instantaneous. The new seat position places the occupant's center of gravity 
right on top of the vehicle center of gravity, so the car literally rotates around you in a turn. It completely changes the perception of vehicle handling and responsiveness. It also allows us to engineer higher performance chassis calibrations while simultaneously improving ride quality. Historically, cars with rear weight bias struggle to get to neutral and aggressive vehicle handling. We were determined to get all the benefits of that weight distribution without any of the drawbacks. We did that by putting untold hours into the design of suspension geometry, bushing compliances, tire construction, and the front to rear stagger of the wheel sizes. There's actually a lot more than that to it, but I can tell you the final result is magic. The driving dynamics of this vehicle are better than we thought they would be. Today's car, today's Corvette, gets excellent marks for ride and handling balance, but the Stingray is a whole new deal. No Corvette has ever felt so comfortable, nimble, and so completely stable. I can't talk about the suspension without talking about its foundation, the body structure. The main structure is aluminum and makes the most use of high pressure die casting in General Motors history. The six largest castings are enormous. These high pressure die cast precision parts have superior material properties, more design flexibility than traditional castings. They are used throughout the car to minimize the number of joints and put the material exactly where it needs to be for maximum stiffness and minimum mass. They are the key to making this the stiffest format in history, which in turn contributes to great driving dynamics. We've been using a center backbone strategy since 1997, but for the 2020 Stingray, it has been completely redesigned for mid-engine configuration. In addition to great structural feel, customers will notice very little rockers, which allow for easy entrance and exit, compared to other mid-engine uh, designs featuring a tough-type construction. Beyond aluminum, we're using many innovative materials in many strategic places. Corvette has always been a mosaic of premium materials, and this one's no different. We picked the material that optimizes the performance of each component. On a mid-engine car, you would expect there to be a front storage compartment. But the Corvette also features a rear storage compartment. Both of these compartments and the dash panel are molded from ultra lightweight fiberglass with a proprietary resin. It's so light that actually a solid brick of it will float in water. This is a real first, a real breakthrough. It helps manage the Corvette's overall weight while maximizing luggage volume and resisting elevated temperatures. And speaking of those two luggage compartments, we felt it was hugely important to maintain our class leading utility. Combined, these compartments provide unprecedented luggage volume. The trunk easily accommodates the standard removable roof panel, which has been a hallmark of Corvette since 1984, or two golf bags. In fact, even the five-piece luggage that we custom designed to completely fill the back of the current car fits perfectly in this new car. Protecting that rear trunk, we have the automotive world's first curved carbon fiber bumper beam. This is the lightest and strongest possible structure for this very important part of the car. Now, the luggage room is not at the top of most sports car customers' reason to purchase. We know it improves the car's bandwidth. What I mean by that, it does a lot of things well. Of course, we want the Corvette to be an amazing track weapon. We also want it to shine as a daily driver and as a long-distance touring machine. Another way we expand bandwidth is through customizable driver modes. The four familiar driver modes we introduced on the current Corvette return for 2020. Weather, tour, sport, and track. Customers will find even more vehicle characteristics involved in tailoring the driving experience in each mode. New for this generation, we have what we call C mode. C mode lets you customize every vehicle attribute we offer and make it accessible with a single push of a button. So for example, if you like to set up for a particular track, instead of wading through menus every time you head for pit lane, you hit the Z button, Z mode button, and off you go. 
As Phil mentioned, the new Stingray will have the 51 package. It includes a long list of track-focused features like performance tires, larger brakes, electronic limited slip differential, more aggressive gearing in the transmission, additional cooling capacity, and aerodynamic content. The aero content includes additional brake cooling and a front splitter and rear spoiler that actually create full vehicle downforce and confidence-inspiring balance on the track. With more weight on the rear axle, the electronic limited slip differential is more effective than ever, giving the Stingray the optimum handling balance through every corner and the ability to power down like never before on corner axle. The available performance traction management has been refined for greater acceleration and more consistency across a wider range of surface conditions. I'm just scratching the surface of what this vehicle does, can do, and will do. Many of our features are enabled by our new digital vehicle platform. This new electrical architecture sends signals much faster, provides state-of-the-art cybersecurity and over-the-air reflash capability. We are introducing our second generation of the Performance Data Reporter, which will now have a database of track start-finish lines. You'll be able to do point-to-point -point reporting and can even be set to auto-report like a dash cam. Of course, all the video is high definition. Other features include 14 speaker Bose Performance Series audio system, the highest level we've ever done. And a rear camera mirror, but we put the camera on the roof, so it's high and forward, so you can better monitor your blind spots. There's even a front lift system capable of raising the nose up to two inches. <laughs> You guys know we talk to our customers. <laughs> but that front lift system is actually GPS enabled. Every time you lift the nose, it will ask you, do you want this one memorized? And if it's one you use often, all you have to do is hit a single button, say yes. It will memorize that in up to a thousand places. <laughs> Time to approach, it will automatically lift. You don't have to do anything. Okay, uh, you probably been waiting to hear about the drive line, the performance stuff. I'll talk about the feeding part of the Corvette, the engines. In a world quickly migrating to forced induction, small displacement engines, we are bucking the trend and continuing to advance the development of our famous small block V8. There's simply no substitute for the immediate responsiveness and the sound emanating from this technological masterpiece. We will be the only remaining naturally hazardous V8 in this segment. We are calling it the LT2, and its displacement remains 6.2 liters. But that's about all that's carryover about it. With the performance exhaust, it was recently SAE certified at 495 horsepower and 470 foot pounds of torque, making this the most powerful Corvette Stingray ever. For the first time, the Stingray comes with a standard integrated engine mounted dry sump lube system. The system runs the engine. The low profile oil pan reduces mass and lets us mount the whole engine lower in the chassis. The oil cooler has even more capacity. The bottom line is this new loop system has been absolutely bulletproof during our testing at tracks like BI's care to our first eight-speed dual-clutch transmission for DCT. This features a very innovative electronic transmission range selector, a masterpiece in engineering art and design that will become a benchmark in the industry. The DCT provides lightning fast shifts and excellent power transfer. Simply put, the DCT shifts gears faster and better than any human can. It offers a spirited and connected feel of the manual and the premium driver driving comfort in an automatic. It truly feels like you're getting the best of both worlds. 
which set the DCT up with a very low first gear to leverage our additional traction and to get the car off the line very quickly. Gears two through six are closely spaced and keep the engine near the power peak on the track. Its tall seventh and eighth gears make for easy long distance cruising with low mechanical stress and excellent fuel economy. The LT2 engine and the DCT in combination with this new architecture make the new Stingray a very good car. We are seeing zero to 60 times under three seconds. You heard that right. C51 Stingray under three seconds. This puts the Stingray in the company of some of the world's quickest cars, and in our own history, only beaten by our 755 horsepower ZR1. Now I talk about a lot of changes, uh, but the truth is we have not changed the essence of Corvette. Corvette is all about freedom and the call of the open road. It is a designed in America, built in America, road going private jet with first class seating for two that will take you places you never thought you would go. In short, the Corvette is an attainable dream car. That has been true for 66 years and the 2020 Stingray makes that truer than ever. We're welcoming the cars back to the stage. Driving these cars are actually two of our uh, team members. Uh, development members on my right, Alex McDonald. Thank you, Alex. And Mike and Susie. You'll see many, many, many of our Corvette team members here uh, to talk to uh, at this event. They and the thousands of men and women at General Motors have spent countless hours delivering on this mission. And I personally want to thank them all. I'm so proud of this team. Before I invite Mark back, I'd like to thank him and the entire leadership team at General Motors for their support. Without them, this would not have been possible. Mark, they Or, of course, you can go to your preferred Chevrolet dealer. So, um, that's a great 
great thing, and it's, it's a configurator. You can actually look at the car, you can see the car, you can price the car, and it's something that we haven't had before. So thanks for, for doing that. Our whole team that has uh, done that. It's, it's fantastic. So um, thank you for, for doing that, Barry. And it's been great. We can do that on live next week. I gotta tell you, we are just getting started. If you are one of those who like and enjoy driving, you owe it to yourself to try this back. Thank you. Thank you. 